Welcome back, my gardening friends, to another Focal Point Friday episode. These quickie episodes are either an important highlight from a previous episode or a quick focus on a current event in the food and agricultural world that I think that we should be talking about. Think of these episodes as a way to tickle your brain with one or two ideas to ponder while you're planning or planting or digging in the garden this weekend. Without further ado, let's get down and dirty. Enjoy! got a really great question through the voice messages this week, and I thought I would share this one with you because it's a question that gets brought up a lot in different gardening and livestock and homesteading groups, and there's just a lot of misinformation out there. Greetings and salutations. A new coworker is offering to bring me a bucket of alpaca poo to uh, fertilize my garden with. He tells me that alpaca poo does not need to be composted before you grow in it. Um, He also has llamas and chickens. The chicken poop is actually what I was after. But he says chicken poop has to be composted and alpaca poop does not. How about a list of poops that you can put in your garden? So this is a really good question, and I'm really glad that you asked. This came from Cody. Um, You hear a lot of this information passed on about how many of the herbivore manures, namely rabbit, goat, and alpaca, don't need to be composted before we add them into our gardens. As far as the alpaca poo, um, your neighbor is sort of correct. Alpaca, llama, goat, and sheep manure are all excellent for the garden, and they tend to not burn when they're used before being composted because they don't contain as much nitrogen as, say, a chicken manure does. Now, horse manure can be high in weed seed because their digestive system does not work as thoroughly as some animals. And poultry manure is high in ammonia and salts, and it will burn if overapplied, especially if it's fresh. So this is why we're always told, well, you don't have to worry about composting these other ones. The problem isn't always the nutrients or the manure's effect on the plants, though. The danger is that uncomposted manure from any herbivore other than rabbits can contain human pathogens like bacteria, salmonella, even E. coli. Fresh manure has the potential of transmitting these pathogens that can then be taken up into the plant tissue and then consumed by us. Now, the age of the animal, the food it has eaten, the manure's moisture content, the amount of bedding that's been mixed in, plus how long the manure has been sitting around are all factors that we need to take into consideration before we use any of these manures in our garden beds. So aging the manure will help with this. It's faster than waiting for it to fully compost. Incorporating garden soil into the manure and then aging the mixture for at least 120 days helps the soil microorganisms clear out the pathogens and reduce those weed seeds by about 60%. Composting fully is safer, but of course this can take six months to a year depending on your composting style. And if the manures have been sitting in a pile for a few months just waiting to be used, normally they are going to be okay. If you're unsure if it's aged and you want to incorporate it in right away, you can use it to create new beds. We talked on Tuesday's episode about filling our raised beds and leaving that top six inches for the growing plants. You build up a base of fresh manure in those beds and then cover it with that six inch layer of topsoil and compost for planting into. The fresh manure will heat up the bed as it starts to compost underneath, which helps the seeds in the top layer germinate. You just don't want to plant anything that's going to reach down below that six inches like root vegetables because you risk direct contact with the manure before it's done composting. This is a really good way to get a jump on the gardening season if the manure hasn't been aged yet, or just a really good way to fill a raised bed in the fall for planting in the spring. You can use this same method with aged manure if you have access to it. It just won't heat the bed up. Now, none of this is necessary with rabbit manure. Rabbit manure contains four times more nutrients than cow or horse manure. It is twice as nutrient-rich as chicken manure, and it does not need to be composted to use as fertilizer safely. 
Now, if you live where you can burn the manure, that's another option. Burning kills off any of the weed seeds and the pathogens. It creates a biochar with the bedding components that the manure is often mixed with. And once it's cooled off, it can be used right away. Like I mentioned, we're doing this with the chicken manure and bedding this year to fill the bottom layer of some new raised beds this season. I really do hate being the bearer of bad news when people say certain manures don't need to be composted, but it's really more a matter of food safety in most instances rather than the effect it has on the plants. Thanks for joining me on this Focal Point Friday. I'll be back again on Tuesday for another regular episode of the Just Grow Something podcast. So until next time, my gardening friends, keep on cultivating that dream garden, and we'll talk again soon.